Hello guys, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for staying to the end where we are going to be switching over to CrossFit. So we just got done talking about the scores and results from the V and L recently. And now we're gonna be going over the CrossFit semifinals week one, which we will be including what people you should watch or keep updated with. I am very excited to talk about CrossFit. If CrossFit is one of my favorite sports to watch, I have like a list of like favorite sports to watch and CrossFit is definitely up there in top five for sure. And talking about it is obviously fun as well. So the CrossFit semifinals started yesterday, May 16th, and they will continue till June 2nd. The individual semifinals will take place in seven locations, and we're going to be focused on the women you should watch at the competition it gets more and more fierce. Before we do so, I'm just going to let you guys know what the workouts are for the semifinals. Um, as you guys know, the workouts are different for the quarterfinals, you know, the opens, like they're all different each round sort of it's competition um i'm not really sure what the right term would be for that but for the semifinals they're different so these are the workouts so workout one is five rounds for time you do an 800 meter run and then 10 minute 10 reps of clean and jerks the time cap is 30 minutes and the weight needed for the clean and jerks is 125 pounds for females specifically whoever completes the five rounds the quickest or first wins the second workout is also five rounds for times. You do 100 reps of double unders. Double unders are a way of jumping rope, but instead of the rope passing under the foot, the feet once for each jump, it passes under twice, if that makes sense. The speed of the jump remains the same, but the speed of the rope must be much quicker to execute these. Next, you complete 20 toes to bars, which is where you hang from a bar, which is, and then you have, you're, this is like so hard to explain, but you hang from a bar and then you have your feet straight out and you have to keep trying to get your toes from the bottom to your mid body, just like a midair crunch. Like just think of it as like a midair crunch, basically where you're hanging from a bar. And then you do 10 front squats and the weight used for that is 155 pounds. The time cap on this is 18 minutes. Just for some background information, the difference between a front squat front squat and a back or regular or more typically seen squat is a front squat is when you hold the barbell in front of your chest and the workout targets more of your quads whereas a back squat or more typically seen squat is where the barbell is behind your body and targets more of your glutes and hamstrings whoever completes this workout the fastest or first wins the third workout is also for time where you have seven rounds. You start with a 10 calorie echo bite where you have to reach a certain amount of calories burn. Then you do one legless rope climb where you legit only rely on your upper body strength and the grip of your hands. <laughs> like just imagine like how much your hands must burn from that. Like the calluses that you must get on that, that, that is insane. Just thinking about that. The rope for this is 15 feet. Then you do 10 box jump overs with a 24 inch box, and then you finish the round with another legless rope climb. The fourth workout is also for times. Okay, before I begin explaining the rest of the workouts, I'm just gonna lay this out here. All the workouts are for time. You wanna complete them all with perfect form, the quickest. So just wanted to preface that before I go over the last four, five, six workouts. So the fourth workout, you start with a 400 meter row, and then you do 96 foot walking handstand then a 600 meter row, then a 120 foot walking handstand, then an 800 meter row, and finish it off with a 72 foot walking handstand. You just, you just do one round of that, and there are no weights involved. This one is really about endurance and being able to support your own body weight and balance. The fifth workout is purely based on strength. You only do one round and you have a time cap of 11 minutes. You first do 10 squat snatches with 135 pounds, then you do 8 squat snatches with 145 pounds, then 6 squat snatches with 155 pounds, then 4 squat snatches with 165 pounds, and lastly 2 squat snatches with 175 pounds. Lastly, the sixth workout is one round as well. You do a 30 calorie echo bike and then 15 muscle ups and then 72 foot dumbbell walking lunges. So this one is where taller people or, more pe or people with longer legs have the advantage in some way. A muscle up is where you do a pull up but you keep pulling your body all the way up until your arms are completely straight and you're right over the bar. The dumbbells must be 70 pounds in each hand for both of this. For 
for both of your hands for this workout. That's what I meant to say. So now that we got that out of the way, I'm gonna let you guys know who you should be watching out for. Former champion, Tia Claire Toomey is back and she finished in 28th place at the quarterfinals. She has won six consecutive titles on the women's side and hopefully this year will be her comeback year after having to step aside last season to have a child. Back at the Rogue Invitational, Toomey came in second to Laura Harvath. It's always great to see a former champion return to the competition after they step aside for something else in their life and it's even greater when they come back stronger. So definitely watch for Toomey during the semifinals. And then I just mentioned Laura Harvath, and going back to her, she has been one of the most consistent competitors. She placed fourth in the quarterfinals, and she apparently has a more stable personal life right now and a great team around her, so it's thought that she could remain consistent and do really well. She trains with her brother and her brother's significant other, so she has a lot of support, which always helps athletes perform their best with the best encouragement possible. And also, I believe that her brother is also competing as well. Also, Harvath recently won the Hungary Weightlifting National Championships, and she then went on to compete at the European Championships and finished in six. She is so, so, so incredibly strong. It is not human how strong she is. I will say that right now. Like, it is insane. Another person to watch is Emma Lawson, who is the winner of the quarterfinals, and she's literally 19 years old. Like, that... That's insane. 19 years old, winning the quarterfinals across. Like, that's that's insane. I, like, can't process that. She's the first team to win the individual quarterfinals. She's insane. She is so mentally and physically tough and so admirable. She made an appearance at the 2019 Games where she achieved a third-place podium finish in the girls' division. So she is just getting better and better, and we will be sure to see how well she does in the semifinals. Another person making their comeback is Haley Adams. She placed 16th in the quarterfinals. She had a year off where she was still training, but not in the same intensity as she would have been if she were competing in that year. Taking a year off can be very alarming since the pace at which your muscle, muscle mass decreases is insane. But if you look at her, it's clear she is still very strong and fit and ready for the semifinals. She placed 16th, so obviously, ob English, whoa. So obviously she has been training and I have a good feeling this comeback in the semifinals from her is going to be very, very strong and she's going to perform well. I have a good feeling about that. Next up, we have Emma McKeod. She came in 10th last year in the semifinals. If she maintains her fitness level, continues to refine her skills and stays injured free, she certainly has a good chance of doing well at the 2024 CrossFit semifinals. Her past performances and resilience in competitions indicate that she could be a formidable contender. As always, a lot will depend on the specifics of events announced, you know, like the specific, specific events um, in the semifinals compared to the quarterfinals as they play the different strengths and weaknesses. Um, so we will have to see how that goes, but I do have a good feeling that she will perform very well. She always performs well, and I will not be shocked if she does amazing. So before we end the show, I wanted to let you guys know how the competition is looking so far. The Europe and Asia semifinals of Workout 1 have been completed and the scores are finalized for that. So I'm going to let you know who is leading the top five in both regions. I'm also going to leave up the workout descriptions while we talk about this Workout 1 so you guys can keep in mind exactly how impressive their times are. In first, oh, this was from the Europe semifinals so i also didn't explain this before and i'm sorry that this might sound confusing but the competition the crossfit games the semifinals have are in regions so you have like north america west north america east all that you have africa asia europe so the europe and asia semifinals have been for workout one it's only workout one want to make that clear have been finalized and completed so that's why we're only going over these two so in first at the Europe semifinals was Gabriela Megawa from Poland. The 25-year-old finished with a time of 21 minutes and 11 seconds. Second place was Amy Kringle from the UK, also 25 years old. She finished with a time of 21 minutes and 13 seconds. So really, really close to the first place time, literally two seconds. Third place was Emma Tall from Sweden. She is 32 years old and finished with a time of 21 minutes and 32 seconds, also super close. And fourth is another competitor from the UK, 24-year-old Ella Wilkinson placed fourth with a time of 21 minutes and 40 seconds. 
In fifth was another UK competitor, also 24 years old, Jennifer Muir, placed fifth with a time of 22 minutes and 3 seconds. Looking at all these times side by side, you can see the competition was really, really close. In the Asia semifinals, Seher Kaya placed first. She's from Turkey, is 26 years old, and clocked a time of 23 minutes and 13 seconds. So right off the bat, the Asia semifinals time started a minute longer than the Europe semifinals top five. So it's interesting to see that. And we'll see how they'll do head to head. And second was Reza Blinova, who is 90, 29 years old. I, oh my gosh, 90 years old. That would be insane. 29 years old. And she clocked a time of 23 minutes and 56 seconds. Then in third was Song Yun Choi from the Republic of Korea. At 25 years old, she clocked a time of 23 minutes and 57 seconds. These are all really close times, but it is interesting to see that, you know, like Gabriela Mingawa started at 21 minutes, and then we have the first place for Kaya was at 23 minutes. I don't know, just, just interesting to see like a two minute difference there, or one minute. I can't do math right now. That's a, yeah, two minutes. Oh my goodness. Wow, that was rough. Moving on, math is hard. In fourth was Chao Wen Chung, also from the Republic of Korea, who clocked a time of 24 minutes and 41 seconds. A pretty, a pretty, a pretty big gap between the third place and fourth place times. Lastly, in fifth was Adele Quentin Page from Hong Kong. She is 33 years old, so one of the older competitors in the top five, and she finished with a time of 24 minutes and 44 seconds, super duper close to the fourth place finisher's time. It's just really interesting to look at all these. And I'll, I'm going to be very interested to see the North America regions, how they do, um, especially because I recognize a lot of the names um, from previous competitions in the U.S. and such. So it will be very interesting to see how that goes. And I'm definitely looking forward to reporting on that. OK, so that is all that we have for you guys today. Thank you guys for tuning in to the GSMC Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. Thank you once again, and have a wonderful day. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn ain't that great I don't wanna go to